India, where all her children made her, all of us, whatever religion we may belong. Whilst this exhibition is revolutionary in terms of place, in other words, Leeds Art Gallery, and in scale, certainly the most, Ashish's most strategically ambitious and extensive national program to date, working with over six cities, both in the UK and internationally. The Between Kismet and Karma exhibition is by no means an exhaustive or definitive survey of South Asian women artists, addressing the themes of, of nation, body, city, borders, and conflict. thanks to uh, people who've been uh, really instrumental in pushing what we're calling in the higher educational uh, landscape now the knowledge transfer agenda. You're free. you're free to go to your temples, you're free to go to your mosque or to any other place of worship. It's fantastic, I'm so excited. I've, um, been thinking about this project and have worked with Farida and the team for, for a couple of years now it feels like so it's so satisfying and somewhat emotional to see the work finally here um, it's just made it all all the efforts everybody's efforts worthwhile so I'm just I'm really thrilled the team of women is a very strong one but I think the other the other team that has really struck me is around cultural memory and I think that's why some of them have been so moving because I can there is a process of identification and not just because I'm from the subcontinent but because you see yourself as being part of the same history. Uh, do you think about the gallery so how do you like the show? Well it's uh, quite intriguing actually so uh, I think the variance in the the different forms um, is very inviting and just the thoughtfulness and, and the connections to, to cultural issues. I thought it was really enlightening, brilliant show. The other pieces I thought particularly great was um, the, um, the indigo, the indigo, indigo colours on the far side, you know, the, the whole idea of the British colonial past and that rule and that sort of conflict and that kind of thing, but I think it's captured really well. Also the perspective of the, uh, you know, in an exhibition of women artists have a woman artist filming men was, was very interesting to kind of think that through in my head. Um, it's really thought provoking, it's, uh, it's really something else, yeah, it's great. I liked the ship and the fact uh, that it was almost like a whale that they were pulling apart and that really made me think about um, the conditions of work etc out there so I think as a whole the exhibition has exceeded what I was expecting mm. and I, you know it's really really made me think. I think it because often in a lot of um, well parallel kind of exhibitions there could be an emphasis one way or the other but I think it, there's a mixed medium which is which is really nice but of course the other thing that's so unusual is that it's truly subcontinental in a way that often you don't see. I mean, even when there's, you know, women artists in, in India, it's always India tends to dominate, but you don't see this kind of, of breadth, I think. I think for me, it's, um, it's about the diversity of the materials as much as the approach from, you know, the very soft kind of fabric feel to, you know, the harsh steel to the ceramic work to the video work to and then but also a sort of a diversity of metaphor so elements of humor as well as out and out feminism there's just a real elegance about the installation juxtaposition of works and stories and color and texture it's it's a very generous exhibition i think i think um audience members will want to keep coming back and learn something a little bit different each time they come So I think in a way, uh, over the years, I mean, it, uh, I think initially came slowly and unconsciously that the environment that I live in really sort of um, <coughs> informs my practice and, uh, you know, uh, and I end up creating work which is from the daily life. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's how 
I, I think that very often the case the artists do reflect the society or the state of the environment that they're in and different artists respond to different In terms of space, I mean, the village as a space is quite a big deal. What happens with Aisha in that film, the place where she grows up is the same village she ends up in later. It's, it's, its identity just changes. So it was India when the new border got line got drawn, it became Pakistan. But she's still in the house that she grew up in. And this kind of, the home as a kind of space of refuge in that kind of way is, is destroyed. You just got me thinking about the... As, just how different, you know, they're, they're a fantastic trio of films, or you know, it's more than three films, but a fantastic section because they are so different and deal with conflict in such, you know, different ways, whether it's humour, whether it's more kind of serious realism, or a sort of more artistic documentary. It's Beyond Borders really resonates with me, and uh, for me it's beyond physical borders, and that's why I talk about emotional landscapes, and that's why I've titled it Make Friends with a Tamil Woman. Uh, I try and recreate the, the, the whole mentality of the small minority Tamil uh, community that uh, lived in Kuala Lumpur in Malaya. And, um, it's, it's mouthed by a character called, uh, who's my uncle, really, so uh, we just have to imagine that he's here. It's all bloody tum tum tum. <laughs> so, we thought we'll come to Malaya. We thought for a while, yeah? When we came here, you know, the, there were the Malays in their sorrows and the Chinese in their, their, their samfus and chok sams, and, and there were our ladies, you know, they used to wear those little tinkling bells and the ankles and then cling. So we were all immigrants, all survivors, all surviving together. And we always thought we would just be here for a while. For a while. <laughs> Why do we always think it's for a while? We thought we'd make our money and go back home to Jaffna. For a while. <laughs> Before you know it, you put down roots. And the next thing you know, it's just the small things that you remember about Jaffna. Hmm? Like the smell of uh, the jasmine flower when the sun sets. <laughs> Feminists talk about the dark continent of the woman's body, the specificity of female experience, um, which seems to argue that certain modes of feeling, certain, a certain sensibility is only available to you through biology. Uh, what I wanted to ask you is how your work uh, comments on these various discourses that surround us about the body. These are some of the um, armor pieces that developed out of um, lingerie. So, you know, something which is like a negligee or a vest, um, working it with metal or steel became a bulletproof vest very much. Um, but at the same time, some of the other pieces have this sense of kind of softness, and yet they're made in steel. So there, there is a kind of dual duality in that um, of, of protection, but at the same time, a certain amount of aggression and a certain amount of sexuality that comes out of the, the idea of the garment. Paravita Bora has uh, worked quite uh, substantially on urban politics in Bombay, whether it's about people going to the toilets or, uh, or about uh, stereotyping of uh, Christian women. She has also been uh, uh, a scriptwriter for uh, quite a famous film uh, called Khamosh Pani or Silent Waters, 
uh, which is about uh, about life in a Pakistani village, which gets tense uh, during um, during a, a rise of fundamentalism in the region. So the way we language blackness as well, the way yeah. in which that the whole narrative around blackness has become, uh, you know, such a big part of the the, the Hindu, um, you know. I would say South Asian. Yeah. We are all Kalis here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>